I'm going to show you how to draw a city using one point perspective. What is one point perspective? One point perspective is a drawing method that lets us draw things so that they look like they're getting smaller in the distance as they move away in space. It's a way of drawing on paper, which is a two-dimensional flat surface, and making it look three-dimensional and realistic. I'm going to show you some easy methods to do this. I'm going to start with a tracer. I want to create a big round space. Now the best tracer that I could find at the moment is this paper plate. Um, make sure it's pretty big. You want to have a big area to work with. Now in the middle of my circle, we're going to put a dot. This is called our vanishing point. Now I want to draw a series of buildings that go around on the inside of my circle. And for this, I'm going to need a ruler. Every line you draw needs to go to the middle of your circle, to your vanishing point. Now we want to decide what kinds of buildings we want. Of course, we know that in art, it's really important to have variety. So you want to have buildings that are taller and shorter and wider and thinner. You want to have lots of different buildings. So I'm going to start at my point. I'm using my pencil very, very lightly. And my ruler is help, helping me guide my lines. I want my first building to start about down here. And I can turn my paper as I'm going. I'm going to draw my next line about here. Now the top of my building is going to be here. Notice how it's parallel with the bottom of your circle. It's like a train track. The lines just never cross. I'm going to make this building a little shorter. Now I'm going to create the top of my building line. That's my second building. My third building, maybe I'll make it even bigger. And maybe I'll make it even a little bit higher this time. Now you can see that I've been using these lines a little. These are just guidelines. I'm going to erase those later when I'm finished with my buildings. Let's make a really fat sort of lower building now. Okay, I'm imagining that we're in the city. I used to live in New York City and in New York City there are so many buildings and they are so unique. Really big ones, really skinny ones, tall ones, some really short little fat ones. There you go. That's my short little fat building. You're going to keep going around until you've filled your whole space up with buildings. One thing that you can do is you can imagine maybe all the places that you've been on vacation, maybe the places that you've grown up in if you've lived in several places, and you can try to draw some buildings that are from those cities that you love or that you know. Now when I'm doing my windows, you're also creating parallel lines, lines that look like train tracks. And when I'm doing the sides of my windows, you're also going to use the vanishing point and a ruler to help you get the side of your windows. See how I'm doing the edge of my window now? Also using my ruler, imagining the line, and then where I want the line to go, that's where I use my pencil. Let's do a second window. First I create my parallel lines. Lining my ruler up with my vanishing point. Here's my first window, here's my second window. Do you see how it looks like it's going back in space and it's getting smaller as it goes back in space? And you're just going to keep on going and going and going. This one I'm going to make super tall. You can have a lot of fun with this. There's so many different options. That's a really tall building. Then I might do a really tall one. 
And then I might do another little one. Now for the fun part. You can imagine in your city that all of these buildings are different types of buildings. Maybe there's a bank, maybe there's a school, maybe there's an apartment building or a shopping center or a restaurant. How are you going to draw that so that it looks like the kind of building you're thinking of? Always using the vanishing point, you're gonna just keep on using that to draw in any windows, doors, or additional decoration. So this is gonna be, let's say, a really big office building. And because my building gets higher and further away, I might even make these lines get smaller as I go up. That's gonna help my building look like it's moving way far away in space. See how my lines are getting narrower? I'm gonna say this is a school. Let's do a couple of windows, always lining up my ruler. Putting my ruler here, that's helping me establish where the side of my window is. Because it's a school, it's gonna have kind of a big door kind of like a double door. I'm just trying to create as much variety as I can here. I'm trying to create lots of different types of windows, lots of different types of doors. So to help create the illusion that it might be a really tall building, I'm gonna make these ladder lines coming down, but as I get lower, I'm slowly making my ladder lines wider apart. Notice how my circles are getting smaller as I go higher too. Right? That shows us that things are going away from you and getting smaller. Okay, now you can erase your vanishing point. It's really important that you use different widths of permanent markers. We want to think about line quality. Line quality means that we don't always use the same thickness of line. We like to vary our lines. That means sometimes we use thicker marker and sometimes we use thinner marker. So for your bigger outline areas, you might use a bigger marker, and for the small details in your windows or doors, you'll use a smaller marker. And you may not have all of these at home. It's okay to do it all in any kind of marker that you have, um, but if you have different varieties of markers, definitely use those. So I'm going to take a thicker marker and I'm going to outline all of my outside lines, my contour lines of my buildings. Now I'm going to take a smaller marker and I'm going to do some of the details in my smaller marker. So I've traced all my lines. Now you can erase your pencil lines and you can continue to add as many details as you want. Maybe you want some windowsills or a balcony or a bench somewhere or some more brick designs. So you can get as creative as you want. Now for really strong contrast, you can try to decide where you want to create some black areas. You don't want to overdo it, but you can choose a few spaces that you think might look good colored in completely in black. You can use your fat marker for that. It creates really interesting contrast in your art. It also makes your art a bit more interesting to look at. Okay, so I've used my bigger marker and I've outlined a few areas and 
created some contrast and some emphasis in some places. Um, this is also line quality, so now I have some very small lines, very skinny lines, and some very fat spaces. Um, and it helps to create a little bit of focus in your artwork. So you can color this any way that you like. Um, I want to start by using colored pencils for my windows and I'm just trying to create a light reflection in my glass. So I'm not coloring it entirely, I'm just coloring it a little bit diagonally. And that makes it look like there's a little bit of a reflection in the glass. You can use blue or black if you want to create the illusion that maybe the lights are on and somebody's home, you can use yellow. I'm not doing the really tall office buildings, I'm just doing the smaller residential buildings. Now I might use some watercolor in my sky. You can do a daytime sky, so you can do light blues or some sort of uh, lighter color, or you can do an evening sky, maybe with some blacks and blues. So I'm gonna do a night sky. It's kind of a blue-gray, has a little black in it. And you can add in as much pigment as you want. Sometimes it's nice to tap in a little more dark areas. Okay, so here's my night sky. Now I need to decide what colors I want to paint my buildings. You can either do um, a color wheel. So you can do your red, blue, and yellow, and then the secondary colors in between. Or you can choose to do grays and neutral colors. It's really up to you. Keep your paint nice and see-through. So we're basically using a wash of color. That means your color is see-through because we still want to see the black marker. So I might darken the bottom edges of my buildings and get lighter as I go up. That's going to help create the illusion that things are going up and away from you in space. It's atmospheric perspective. Things are both larger, closer to the viewer, and they are more pigmented, which means they have more color and they tend to be more intense, darker in color. So it kind of looks like it's going away from you in space. But I'm always using a really light wash of color, so I'm using lots of water, just a little bit of color, and that helps my watercolor look really transparent and really beautiful. Okay, so I've painted all of my buildings. This is quite a colorful cityscape, but you could do yours in all grays or browns. Again, you could do a whole color wheel, whatever you want. Now I'm gonna cut it out and I can glue it onto a colored piece of paper to have a nice vibrant background. So I've added some stars in my night sky. I used a white gel pen for that, but you could also use acrylic paint with a very small brush. You could do blue paper, purple paper, um, whatever you have. Um, I'm gonna use black paper just because my sky is black and the black paper plays along nicely with my dark night sky. So I'm going to glue this on. Once you have it glued on and nicely centered, you can find a good spot to sign your name. And this is our cityscape using one point perspective, which means all lines are going towards one central dot. And it helps to create the illusion of depth and distance. So I'm curious to see what you come up with. I'd love to see the different kinds of buildings you can think of. Maybe you want to represent your home city or your favorite city. Maybe you want to leave it just black and white because that looks really graphic and has a lot of contrast. Maybe you want to add color. Maybe you choose to use colored pencil to color it in or watercolor. I'd love to see what you do. Have fun.